Hello and welcome everyone to Let's Play Tomb Raider 1 Remastered. This guy is 115 speaking and let me finally welcome you to the most beautiful area of the game, Egypt. Its first level city of Kamun will have 3 secrets, 24 goodies and 15 kills. There is an important distinction between the original PS1 and PC version here, where in the PC you would only encounter 14 enemies, but in PS1 you will encounter 15. And this confirms what Aspir have said couple of months before release, that they are using the PlayStation version source code, because this co will, level will correspond with the PS1 version. And uh, perhaps disappointingly, there are no breakaway tiles here to destroy, nor achievements to unlock in this level specifically. However, we are going to collect two new deaths based on two new enemy types we are going to encounter. Now, what I do not like about this level from the get-go is that it this puts this huge chasm in between you and the interesting areas, right? And I don't like it when in Tomb Raiders you have to do this. Same goes for Tibetan foothills in Tomb Raider 2 or even the Gallows Tree in Tomb Raider Chronicles. Just let us get to this area, but not quite yet. So first of all, what we have to do is essentially press this switch, open this door, get a block out to bridge this gap to let this block move into that position and climb the pillar and be on our merry way. And also behind the block here are a couple of pickups, right? So let me show you maybe how to do that very efficiently. And I'm probably going to use this time to talk about the FMV cutscene. Oh, by the way, you can shimmy to the switch, but I don't see a reason why you would want to. You can just jump. It's much faster. Anywho, what we've seen is upon Lara combining the two pieces of Skion, which, by the way, we still have in our inventory, she received a vision. And the vision told her something about three rulers of Atlantis, not two, which is strange because the mural in the Tomb of Tihokan mentioned only two rulers of Atlantis. Or, to be more precise, two just rulers of Atlantis. So perhaps there was a third that people didn't really like. And that's what we've seen in the cutscene. It was either, I think it was Tihokan, who took the piece of the Skion off the third ruler of Atlantis and cast it to this place, which Lara somehow identified exactly, given her archaeological knowledge. I mean, she's a very knowledgeable, but also, I think, a very lucky girl to have done that. Um... So it's interesting, we needed to infiltrate the tomb of Qualopec to get his piece, we need to infiltrate the tomb of Tihokan to get his piece. Now the third piece is not in a tomb, it was taken and cast away, okay? So this is not about us finding the tomb of the third ruler of Atlantis, this is about us finding more of a sanctuary protecting the third piece of the Skion. And that's essentially the story, yeah. Um... We have, what we've just achieved is we got our hands on the two goodies, as I was talking. Um, I find this to be the most efficient way, but I can't blame you if you don't want to push more blocks just to get your hands on them. But this is what you kind of have to sacrifice if you are interested in all of them and the Tomb Cleaner achievement. Now walk to the very edge, but don't continue more than that because there be a panther over here. And since this is a new type of enemy we are encountering, how about we take a picture? Although, I think I want to change Lara's expression. I mean, come on. Yeah, you should be grinning. That's what I'm talking about. So maybe first... <laughs> look at those <laughs> goofy eyes. My God. Okay, although to be fair, these guys terrify me. They deal even more damage than lions do. Okay, we need to turn this around. Like this, at least. Uh, zoom in, perhaps. And now let's take a original graphics and remastered graphics picture and take this guy down from safety okay have no remorse for these beasts these panthers because they can absolutely destroy you it's very easy for them to essentially enter a state of biting you a billion times in a matter of second and draining your entire health pool away and it sucks when that happens so we are gonna stay the hell away from these guys now that's not all because we are now on our way to encounter yet another enemy, but I want it to enter a more light area. I think this will do for a picture. Now, whenever we think of a mummy, what we think of is a slow, shambling, undead corpse walking towards you in video games or horror movies. They took a very vastly different approach here in Tomb Raider. These mummies run on all four, and even though they're humanoids, they make unnatural screeching sound jump around like animals, and when they die, well, they they explode. So, let me take a picture, again, in the original graphics. 
I think this should be fine. And in the remasters. What I like about the remaster touch-ups is that they edit the teeth. This was also shown in the Nintendo Direct uh, trailer and showcase. This is going to be the case and we were all excited. But watch what happens when we kill it. Yeah, you're not imagining things. Chunks of their body fall off and explode. So, is this what you think of when you think of an Egyptian mummy? Yeah, and if that reminds you of something or someone we've encountered not that far ago, you would be correct. They indeed exploded just like the centaurs guarding the tomb of Tihokan, okay? And that's because these guys are kind of the same breed. And we're going to learn more about that as we spend uh, more time in the final Egyptian level and enter the final geographical location of the game, okay? And I don't want to spoil more than that. In case you've never played these games, don't know the story, that sort of thing. By the way, very cool thing, with these small windows, you can take a sneak peek into future locations, which I find endlessly cool. It was cool back in the original, and it's even more cool now that we have an access to a photo mode. Ah, I love this thing so much. Who knew free camera roam could be so much fun in the classic Tomb Raiders? Now, on top of this obelisk, which I'll also talk about, are shotgun shells. But you know what? I just, thinking back to the Nintendo Switch trailer, I just couldn't wait for us to be here and play this part of the game. I am again gonna take a picture. This one should be made into a postcard, I think. Okay, first of all, let's get perhaps the angle right. Let's extend the FOV to capture a bit more. And I would like us to just admire what they did with this place. Okay, I would be terrible at making postcards, but nevertheless, I just want this for the record book. <laughs> so this is what we had to put up with in the originals, the flat, creepy looking face. And to be honest, perhaps it's a bit too much on the cute side, but this is the new face they added, but they still broke the nose off to kind of uh, reference the flatness, and it's also something that happened to the real world Sphinx, right? Which makes sense, it's the least stable element. We are finally here, and I remember back when the trailer was released, we were so excited about the changes in geometry, right? And we wouldn't know how far it would go. It was the first hint we had of the sort of dynamic lighting system they would introduce here. It is absolutely stunning. Now that we're on top of the obelisk, let's, I guess, take another swan dive into the pool over here and climb out. There are more shotgun shells for us to find here, but... You know, I really like to explain the purpose of a level that we are in. The third piece of the Skion is in a sanctuary behind this door over here. The only way to open it is via inserting four artifacts into this here obelisk. Uh, this here is a Scarab, this would be Eye of Horus, the Ankh of Isis and a Seal of Anubis. Via inserting these four key items that door will open and will enter the third Egyptian level. However, we're only in the first, and that's because we'll be back here again in the following level. This is kind of the first time that the devs have played around with the idea of revisiting previous levels, and, well, to be fair, that's not exactly what's gonna happen. They will just copy-paste this room inside the second level, but it's not actually gonna be the exact same room, it's just gonna look like that. But still, it's the first time they play around with this idea, and it's something that they then put on hold and then decided to introduce as part of Tomb Raider 4, The Last Revelation, which, coincidentally, takes place in Egypt, right? So I just thought that's a bit of an interesting trivia in case you're new to the franchise. But we got our hands on a key, and another thing I want to show you, you might be wondering why are we not entering here, well that's because there's a grate and behind it is a large health pack. We'll access this from the other side. Now that we have the key, the shotgun shells, the magnum clips, and we clear this area out of enemies, let's see what the Sphinx is guarding. Well, it really is just a keyhole for which we picked up the so-called Sapphire key, which we're gonna enter. There we go. Oh, so much to talk about. Not only are we gonna see this area in the n at the end of the next level, but also in the unfinished business expansion. But perhaps I'm spoiling a bit too much. Anyway. Get comfortable here, because this is going to be one of the most familiar areas to you in Tomb Raider 1. And again, I don't really want to do this all the time, but I would like to highlight what they did with this room and the statues over here. In the original, I didn't actually understand it at the time because of the graphics, but these are supposed to be legs. And a lap 
and the upper torso and a head. The torso and a head I recognize, but not that these are their legs. They kind of maintain the general shape here as well, and uh, the torsos and heads look much better and realistic now, but they actually fit less to the legs than they did in the originals, that's my opinion. Anywho, once you get your hands on a small health pack, be careful because you're not alone here. The moment you cross this threshold, a panther will appear. And like I said, I don't feel bad at all about cheesing these guys. We'll need to conserve health because of one particularly nasty encounter later in this level. For this one, I really prefer to keep the shotgun handy. He just comes out of nowhere. And again, we get a lovely sneak peek from this here window, showing us the final key item of the level. And we're also going to find ourselves behind this... Uh, I don't even know if it's an ornate glass, probably not a glass in ancient Egypt, not at least used as a window, but this carving. Um, and this corridor right here will actually loop back into the room we just entered from, but the top area, which we cannot reach normally. <laughs> okay, but we are getting ahead of ourselves. Let's now get the magnums out. And again, I will remind you that I'm doing the so-called no pistols challenge, meaning I am refraining from using any kinds of pistols in any situations for the rest of the game. There'll be an exception I'll make to one enemy later on. Okay. We got rid of the crocodile. What we can essentially do is now get our hands on the large health pack because we were on the other side of the grate. And this kind of corridor really makes me very claustrophobic and worried that the moment we're gonna pick it up, something terrible is gonna happen. A boulder is gonna start rolling or a panther will appear and corner us in this corridor. Thankfully, the devs have missed that opportunity for something truly evil in that corridor. I'm happy about that. Let's just trigger the boulder to get it out of the way. You don't have to do this, this is entirely optional, and the entrance into this room is blocked, right? So there is no point. However, I'm gonna use this ramp later on to get down from secret over on this ledge containing Uzi clips. So I wanted to just trigger it first. And our objective in this here room is essentially to open this trap door under the cat statue. Ah, uh, the cat statue. This, to me, my friends, is a huge disappointment. This is what it used to look like in the original graphics. And this is based on a real statue placed in the British National Gallery in London. And I think they've done an outstanding job mimicking it. And you can even see the rough edges, and it looks like it's hewn and carved from stone. It's absolutely gorgeous. Seeing this statue in person, in London, is actually one of my things to do on my checklist before I die. <laughs> what they did, however, in the remastered is this. They did their own interpretation, and I think it looks really not quite as majestic. It doesn't even look like a carving into a stone anymore. It looks like it's made out of plastic now. So I am very, very disappointed, because this is one of my most favorite environmental features in the original Tomb Raider. And large part of the uh, expansion levels are actually dedicated to it. And yeah, in the sandy slope corner, and there's just a secret over there. Now, where we really want to go is this pool over here, because this will enable us to reach the room where the boulder was rolling from, behind the locked grate that will never open, right? But we need to swim under into it for whatever reason. So let's do just that. Oh, and by the way, never talked about this, but there is an amazing website called Archaeology of Tomb Raider. I have completely forgotten them to tell you about that, but whenever I'll find anything interesting linking to these levels, I'm gonna add a link to that article on Archaeology of Tomb Raider into the video description, just so you can enhance your real-world knowledge. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Okay, we need to lure this guy back because I don't have patience to go hunting him for ages. Okay, this should give us ample time. Oh my god, you are the most annoying crocodile ever. Okay, <laughs> now there is nothing inside this area. There are no goodies to pick up uh, in the pool itself. It's up that we want to focus on. And by the way, we find ourselves now on the other side of this small window over here, just so you know. And technically this one as well. What we want to do is open that trapdoor and extend a golden bridge to access it via two mechanisms, one behind this block and one over here. 
So let's use this block first to get to that one. It's the most efficient order of things. And again, apologies I'm talking through the Tomb Raider main theme, but there is just so much to talk about in Egypt that I, I can't stop. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, this will actually allow us to take a look at some uh, environmental objects now reworked to 3D. I'm gonna do the original graphics comparison. So we see that on this 3D table is a 2D sprite of a vase or a jug, right? And for the remasters, they just reworked it completely. Although, I would really expect better detail than this. I mean, come on guys, you can do better than that, surely. Anywho, let's switch to 60 FPS graphics. And above here is a lever, which will extend the golden bridge, which, if I remember correctly, makes the most atrocious of sounds. It's the same like in Pellas Midas, the spike columns room. Oof, it is rough, it really is. Okay, now there is more block pushing ahead of us now that we've activated this mechanism. And this room essentially confirms my theory that I briefly discussed in the beginning that this is all based on the PlayStation 1 versions of the game, not the PC. Because there is an enemy over in that room that doesn't exist on PC, and it scared the living hell out of me when I was playing the PlayStation 1 version for the first time, and they've kept it here. But the good news is, for those who are bloodthirsty, uh, just like I am, that it means we get to land an extra kill, which puts a smile on my face, whatever that says about me. I would also recommend you do get your hands on a shotgun as soon as you push that block out of the way. We are going to make a quick escape, but try to deal as much damage as we can, because the enemy I'm talking about is one of those ridiculously fast and insane and exploding mummies, and my god, will it get worse later in the game. Shotgun ready? Okay, we managed to hit him at least once with a shotgun blast. I once managed to land two shots, but that is very rare. That's fine. We received some small damage, but we saved up a lot of time. Trying to kill this thing with just magnums only from safety, that takes a while. But now, all we have to do is just finish the job, given the damage it took from the shotgun. And there we go. <laughs> Exploded in bits and pieces. So, this is a very nasty surprise that was lying in wait for PlayStation players. As if it wouldn't be bad enough, they can only save at save crystals. Oh well. Now, where we find ourselves here is behind this carving I highlighted earlier. So if we just take a sort of a swan dive with the camera here and enter this small window, we can essentially say hi to Lara. Hello there. <laughs> and here we see the key highlighted. By the way, interesting thing, when we'll revisit this place in the Unfinished Business expansion, there'll be a vase here, a jug, that will trigger an achievement no longer an entrance into this room. There are going to be some changes to the landscape and scenery. But again, getting ahead of myself. I'm just looking forward always so much to the next level and the next part of the level I'm in, and I kind of can't stop thinking about that. So, let's push the block one more time, and we can leave this room. And we are going to essentially find ourselves at the top of the area with the what was supposed to be a beautiful cat statue, but that I feel they absolutely butchered in the remasters. Uh, let me climb up here and activate a lever. But my god, do I like the textures here. They did an outstanding job with those. And there we go, the trapdoor is open. Oh, and by the way, uh, do you see anything odd about this particular texture? Whether it's the remasters or original graphics? Well, there is a cute little smiley face here, <laughs> which is a reference by one of the graphics designers. And I'm sorry, I forgot this lady's name here, but back in the 90s, she was responsible. I think, oh wait, it was Heather Gibson, right? Or Heather Gibbons. I'm sorry, Heather, if I butchered your name. But she put this smiley face here just as a cute easter egg. Another thing I like is that I never realized in the original graphics that this is supposed to be a mirror. I thought it's marble, but in fact, it is supposed to be a mirror that's supposed to cast sunlight. Now, it doesn't cast much light, but you can see one side much darker than the other one, and there are reflections happening there. Although, what we see in the reflection seems to have nothing to do with what's here. It almost looks like... Well, 
Is this some easter egg? What is it we're looking at in the reflection? If any of you guys have an idea, please let me know. But this seems very strange. And eventually, when I'll be tackling the new game plus, we'll see the so-called safe crystals. And there's going to be another strange reflection, which I think is definitely intentional. But we're going to talk more about that later on. We are up above uh, in the ceiling of the area with the sort of Temple of the Cat entrance. And yes, I am calling it Temple of the Cat for a very good reason. Uh, let's pick up a couple of goodies here. Very easy to miss. There should be Magnum Clips, a small mat pack, and another secret with Uzi Clips, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, there we go. And you know what? I think... I'm gonna get Magnums ready, because there's a crocodile here. Okay, well not much of a threat now. So get your hands on these Magnum Clips, and before making it down, just please, please, please don't forget to pick up the Uzi Clips here. Uh, we'll be really happy for all the Uzi ammunition we can get our hands on in the third level of Egypt. By the way, if you're looking for a safe, uh, safe way down, in case you already triggered the boulder, you don't have to worry. In case you haven't, you can immediately side flip to the side, right? In case you do end up triggering it. So that's essentially it. Now, entering the Temple of the Cat, which, by the way, is not the entire scope of it, will be a bit sidetracked in here. Ah, I messed that up. I should have landed to the left. Oh, well. Uh, you have two ways to go, one to continue and one for a pointless lethal trap. So of course I'm going to show you the pointless lethal trap, because Lara would have done that, she's an adrenaline junkie. My god, that couldn't have turned out better. <laughs> I actually didn't expect her to start sliding backwards, but I improvised and it worked. So over here is a bit of spikes that we would have landed in if it wouldn't be for our quick thinking. Oof, thank god. And yeah, there's no recognition, no achievement for doing this. It's just there in case you're interested in triggering it. I absolutely am. Okay, and more candy bars. And now we are going to enter a den of panthers. My god. But it's very dark in here. So let's first let some light in via opening a trapdoor above, which I think is a great idea. And the fact that this works with the game's dynamic lightning is, I think, really neat. But you can hear the growling, probably. Let's take a few careful steps down there and shoot these guys from up top. I have no mercy. These are bloodthirsty hounds. Okay. And more statues of the cat. Do not forget this easy to forget magnum ammunition. We will need it. By the way, even though we're constantly using magnums ever since we found them, our ammunition count keeps increasing, which just shows you how generous the game is with ammo. And now for something rather... I don't want to say terrifying, but okay, to make this jump across and grab the other side, you need to be absolutely perfectly aligned. And let me tell you something odd. Whenever I attempt this in the original graphics, Lara will never grab that ledge and I do not know why. But when I tried in the remastered graphics, it all of a sudden seems to work. So let's see what happens now. Yeah, work this time. I am willing to bet anything, if I was to try it in the 30 FPS original graphics, she wouldn't have grabbed it. That's been my experience repeatedly. I do not understand it, though. Okay, by crossing on this side, you will have opened not just the door to the left, but also to the right, and therefore released more panthers. There are now four live panthers in that pit. Oh, sorry, only three now. <laughs> So let's take care of all of them before we descend to collect some goodies. Okay, one more. Guys, six panthers. This is absolutely insane. One, two, three, four, five, six in here. Two in the beginning. Then when you make this jump, this door will open, revealing two more. And when you reach this ledge, this door will open, revealing two more. Each of these panther pens, how did they even survive there, uh, contains an item. Before we get those items, I would like to show you the final secret of the level, and that is here. And again, this is one of those jumps that I, on my way back, tend to mess up in the original graphics. I do not know why. But we're not gonna have to worry about that, because we're gonna descend down into the den. And that's it, shotgun shells, yay! We're gonna use them shortly on the final enemy of the level, because it's gonna be a very annoying mummy. Now that the danger has been dealt with, we can explore these in kind. Now, these are very dark in the remastered graphics. We can shed some light via firing, 
see the flashes, or you can also use the original graphics to actually look at the textures and admire them. But yeah, a large mat pack and a small mat pack are our rewards. Again, this is entirely optional content. You can make it across this pit, ignoring the secret, the pickups, the kills. Again, something to keep in mind for if and when you'll be tackling the five hours time trial achievement. Okay, and now for the most dangerous encounter of the level. And I myself am not really sure what's going to happen here. So get your shotgun ready and may fortune favor the foolish. Because we'll be... Uh, uh, stand still. Oh, that's it. Thank God. Okay, that could have turned out better, but we saved up all that health for this encounter, okay? Now, if you don't want to use a med pack and you already have minimal health, your best bet is not to do what I did with the shotgun, but instead try to run around the mummy, if it will work out, and try and jump on this sandy slope and turn around and fire at it. The mummy has difficulties reaching you here. It happened to me that it reached me, but less times than it happened that it just turned around and went back into the corridor. Then descend from the slope, lure it back in, jump back onto that sandy slope and rinse and repeat, presumably with pistols and magnums, not a shotgun, to get rid of it and it dealing minimal damage to you, right? But this time I used the luxury of the shotgun because we had the health to spare, because we played so well up to this point. And that's essentially it. But thankfully it is the final enemy. Okay, and this should look familiar. We are finally on the other side of this carving over here and the small window now to our right. So we finally got our hands on the Sapphire key. And we're essentially going to use it to unlock the door to the next level. But before that, we need to empty this heap of sand because underneath it are trap doors that will lead back to the room. And the heap of sand will... Whoa. I guess I was a bit too enthusiastic. I guess we need to descend back into the Temple of the Cat and through the Panther's Den all over again. <laughs> I'm going to see you guys back at that spot. Okay, it did take a couple of minutes, but I am back here. Now, let's not make the same mistake and have a little standing jump exercise, pick up the final candy bars and uh, activate this lever over here. That was a bit awkward, but I'm glad we survived that fall. I wasn't sure if we're gonna see our entire life flash in front of our eyes. This extremely satisfying sound was the sound of a lot of sand moving around, which is exactly what happened. And as a result, some of the level geometry has changed, which I always find very interesting. You can absolutely now drop safely through this slide. These trapdoors, by the way, are sometimes a bit bugged. If you find yourselves underneath them, remember there was just a small sad sandy slope in the corner where I told you how to avoid the mummy and then we went that away. Uh, these trapdoors were supposed to be closed now, but they are not. And sometimes when you step under them without the pile of sand being here, they will open up and then close again. What I'm trying to say is uh, don't trust these in the remasters. In the original, they worked fine. The remasters introduced some new bug where these are open and closed, having nothing to do with the reality of the sand moving across it. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, in this dark corner over here, barely visible, but again, in original graphics, much easier to see, is a keyhole. And yeah, let's make a save here and see how we did in the level. And I'm going to overwrite the Tomb of Tihokan save over here. And there we go. We have found all three secrets, picked up all 24 goodies and killed 15 enemies. Again, if you used to play the PC version of the original release, you will only find 14 enemies. And that's because one of the mummies behind the pushable block in the pool room will not appear in the PC version, only in PlayStation. So that's the source code they confirmed they used and that evidence now adds up. We have not used any med packs, we have not unlocked any achievements, we have not broken any breakaway tiles because there are none. And we had a bit of a detour, our time would have been better if I wouldn't fall at the very end. But we survived and we lived to tell the tale. That's what's important. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the first Egyptian level as much as I did. It is so aesthetically beautiful. And I'm gonna see you in the next one where we are finally gonna get our hands on the goodies 
that we need to insert into the obelisk to reach the sanctuary of the Skion. The next level is called the Obelisk of Kamun, and that's where I'm going to see you, unless you stick around to see me collect two more deaths. Okie dokie, so crossing the chasm once more, we find ourselves at the beginning of the level. I use my Tomb of Tihokan safe to access this place, because we want to be mauled and generally eaten by the panther over here. Now do you see what I mean? Have no mercy for these guys? Yeah, yeah, you're a big bad panther, I get it. They can just stunlock you and instantly take your health away with a couple of bites. That happens so quickly one after another. These guys are extremely dangerous, stay the, stay the hell away, much stronger than the Greek lions. Now, I'm gonna uh, find ourselves here again uh, after I cross the chasm by using our Tomb of Tihokan save, because there is a mummy that needs to kill us. I'm not sure about you guys, but I have a strong sense of deja vu right now. So, this panther already had his snack, which is why we're gonna ignore him, and instead be destroyed by the world's fastest mummy. I said fastest, not the slowest. Can you please come here? Yeah, you're bad, I get it. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is hilarious. Go on, you almost got it. You can do it. <laughs> and it's still angry. Okay, guys, so this raised our deaths count to 28. Hopefully this was very educational. We essentially have eight more deaths to discover across the entirety of the game. Again, as we keep encountering new enemy types, we'll be encountering new deaths. But it's not all about enemies, there are some new environmentals also waiting for us. I hope you had a blast and I'd like to use this opportunity to thank you guys for watching to the very end and also to thank my first ever Patreon, Blank Google. I did not expect support just a few hours after setting up the Patreon, you are awesome. And in case you guys are also interested in supporting these ad-free video game guides, let's plays and walkthroughs, Feel free to check out the Patreon in the description. I have uploaded everything I ever worked on there and you'll find, I think, much more comprehensible collection of all the video games I ever worked on, more so than the YouTube playlist. And also I will be including an Archaeology of Tomb Raider link in the description below in case you want to learn more about the Gaia Anderson cat. Thank you for being patient and I'm very excited to see you very soon in the Obelisk of Kamun, another one of my favorite levels.